Rubber, guys, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having us. Um, let's start with where it all began in the music industry for both you guys. So I, um, I've always, both of us have always been musical um, our whole lives. We both went to Temple University in Philadelphia. I was studying econ. John was studying like audio production. Just wanted to hang out, write some songs, find some like-minded folks, we met at a jam session. And then we wrote really well together. Like the, the writing vibe was just there. We played a couple songs at some open mics on campus and then things just kind of snowballed. We ended up releasing a single and then that got such positive feedback that we were just like, hell, chase validation for <laughs> this stuff and our rubber. Yeah, I, I did hear a story on how you guys became the name rubber, but for anyone who didn't hear it, how did that happen? You know, it's all this one now. It's it, we're named after um the movie Rubber, which is about a tire that and, comes to life. And that in itself is it in a, wild. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very impromptu decision. We were um we were just like hang out with our friends in Nashville. We were down there to just like record a single and um well, a friend of mine was working at a studio at the time. So we got some like free studio time and then we randomly got a gig and they were like, what's the band name? And everyone that we uh, were working with at the time really didn't like our band name at the time. Like it was just, people didn't like it. And we, so we watched the movie Rubber and I was like, yeah, we'll just, just go with this. Tell them Rubber, it's Rubber now. <laughs> so. Any regrets? No. No. I don't think so it's really it's very enigmatic like it's hard to forget it has yeah, ruined seo is not great yeah <laughs> seo is not great. It also ruined the english word rubber for me like if someone just says rubber like in a not in the context of referring to my band i'm just like you know doing some research for you guys i was like rubber and then it's like coming up with the movie tires i was like rubber music and then you guys are the first so yeah good <laughs> it's quite wild but john what do you do outside of production like in the band because it's not often you see producers being part of quote unquote the band yeah i yeah so i play guitar when we do um duo sets and i play bass when we do um full band stuff okay and how do you find the rest of your, your band members? Do they just, you just find random people or you have the go-tos? So, yeah, we have, we have our go-tos, um, but, you know, when they're not available, sometimes it's finding random people. Sometimes it's finding people through people we already know, you know, we have, we have a pretty big network of musicians that we, we play with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and how do you, find writing for rubber do you write for anyone else or by writing um, I mean music yeah writing i do, um i don't help with the writing process of anyone else's music but i do help produce other people's music oh, sorry man that's what i meant like by by writing i mean like producing do you produce other people's music or are you strictly for rubber? no i i i produce other people's music but it's usually for like for money mm -hmm. Um, rubber is really my only project that I'm like committed to as like the producer for where we're, you know, it's like, I have ownership in the project. Yeah. And what's been the hardest part for the music industry for both of you guys? I guess I can go first. Um, the, <laughs> the hardest part is that there's a lot of people who will like tell you tell you really positive things about your stuff and be like oh you're gonna you're gonna blow up or you're gonna do this or oh I could connect you with this person if I wanted to <laughs> or something like like a lot of just like smoke blowing smoke up places yeah. so um so in that sense 
you know, the, the positive validation is great, but there's a point where it's just like, yeah, it all, I'm almost a little jaded towards it, especially from industry people. Cause you know, they'll tell you they're, you're amazing in one minute and then ghost you the next minute. Um, and that has just, it's a difficult game to play internally and trying to balance like accepting compliments, accepting that positive affirmation or positive validation rather. Um, but also like leveling your expectations on things. That's been my, one of my big challenges. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Joe? Yeah. Managing expectations is a big thing. Um, You know, when you drop a song, it's hard to say if it was a success or not until like six months after you drop the song for you to, so I, yeah, I would say the hardest part about working in the music industry is one, managing expectations and two, um, actually understanding when you're successful hmm. and, and when, you, when you've done something right. And what would you say, like, when would you say you've made it in the music industry? Speaking of success. When you can pay your when, bills. Yeah, when you can pay your bills. Yeah, that that's what we're sense. working towards. Yeah. So are you guys currently doing this full-time or do you guys have part-time jobs? We have part-time jobs. No, we have jobs. jobs. Yeah. You want to talk about those or what what do you guys do? I do landscaping right now. Oh, geez. But I'm I'm looking for, I'm also currently looking for a a remote job. I I live that remote part-time job life. I am a um, digital project manager. Oh, that sounds intense. Uh, it's not that intense. It's not. It's not super hard, but it's uh, it's nice because it's really, really flexible, and it allows me to continue to do music. Which, like, if <laughs> it damn music damn near takes up, it takes up more than forty hours a week for sure. With like everything that's involved in it, like the cr- actual creation of music, managing of the socials, coordinating stuff like this, um performing <laughs> it's like there's there's a lot that goes into it and it's a lot of time um so yeah do you guys find it hard to get together all the time recently a little bit more because so we are we are gearing up for a move to la um soon which is really exciting and so we kind of all like went really hard on our part-time job so that we could save up enough money to make it all happen uh because obviously you know we were living in the middle of an economic crisis over here in the united states i think it's global but i we are feeling it extra tough here um and shit's getting really expensive and gas is crazy and we're about to drive across the country so we were just like you know what pedal to the metal both literally and metaphorically we need to make some money. <laughs> so recently in the last couple of months, it's been hard to get together. That was a long winded response to your question. No, gas is getting ridiculous. So it only makes sense. But yeah. why the move to LA? Why not any other state or? So there's a, there are a lot of reasons. Um, and purely superficially, I mean, it's gorgeous in California. The weather is incredible. Philly is like a swamp um and you know it's it is right now the center of the entertainment industry los angeles like Mm. quite easily um we've gone a couple times for work over the last year and the amount of work just like in sessions shoots performances like pop-ups brand deals all this stuff all those decisions are being made in los angeles um And there's just like a thriving creative economy. And one of my, like, one of my theories behind it is that, well, for, I know for a fact, the, one of the highest earning, like, verticals in a music, in in like a band's portfolio, right? Because if you look at the way a band makes money, it's like seven different ways that a band makes money. The, The one with the highest earning potential, other than touring, is sync licensing. And a lot of decisions being made about sync licensing, placing a song in movie, TV, commercial, a lot of that's being made um, in Los Angeles. A lot of the sync agents live in Los Angeles or at least, you know, orbit Los Angeles. And so 
people out there are like just writing as many songs as possible with the hopes that they get in a commercial or get in a TV show or movie and catch a pretty decent sized check too. So makes sense. Is that the end goal for you guys? Kind of getting a couple of sync licenses or? I wouldn't uh, call it the end goal, but it is a oh, goal. Yeah, because sure. it'd be a tough market to get into. Oh, yeah. Like, it's honestly, it's not that hard. Yeah. Um, it is and it's not. It's it's like there's more content being made than ever. So there's a higher demand than ever. But it's really about like finding the right opportunities because you can work with music libraries and those like have some opportunity, but you're kind of just like in an enormous bucket uh, that it's kind of like a by chance situation. You know, like if people start using your stuff and it becomes popular within the platform, the platform might decide to push it. It's more like leaving up to chance. But if you work with a sync agent or you, who you sign to exclusively, or you're working with a distributor that does sync, other stuff like that, they're gonna like pitch your stuff actively. Um, and you have more of a chance of getting paid, but also you're signing um, exclusively with those people. So you're cutting off other opportunities. It's just complex and you have to like look for the right thing. So we're in the process of looking for the right thing. Makes sense. I did say your discography goes back to about 2019. Is that when you guys started or is that just what we see on Spotify? That is like, that was our first recorded music. Yeah. Okay. And so you guys have basically seen success ish or relatively mildly big success over the past three years. How does that feel? You know, um, I, I think that 2010 release you're talking about is Control, I assume, because that was the first thing we ever released on major platforms. But um, when we released that, that actually got played on uh, one of our local radio stations. And um, that was really big for us. Like, that was a huge thing for us at the time, because we did that was something we were not expecting. Um, so... Uh, yeah ever ever since then it kind of has just been feeling like been like slow little wins like that slow little successes the the local station was it's it's like part of the npr network like the national public radio mm -hmm. network in the states which carries some weight to it so it was that we were able to just kind of like consistently level up I just realized that by moving my hand like this, no one listening to this podcast will understand. I was making a ladder motion with my hand for those those listening and not watching. That's right. It gives them more incentive to go back and watch it. <laughs> how did that guys make you how did that make you feel? Like is it just like did they tell you it was gonna play or did they just drop it and go, hey, we played it? No, they didn't tell us. Oh. Found out because we got like a little bump in followers like we got like 30 or 40 followers like randomly and then someone like mentioned us in a story and like you know had like a video of their car radio and our song was playing and I was like I was at the time I was a legal assistant working in an office and I was like Todd <laughs> um <Check it. laughs> I couldn't imagine just hearing your song on the radio, especially like like a car radio. It wasn't digital. It was like radio, radio. It's FM. Yeah. And then that in itself would just be crazy, especially on such a small scale of what you guys were at. So I could imagine that the next three years would be insane. But do you guys ever feel like giving up? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> every every day but um but i know i can't and we know we can't can we not uh that's, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be funny um it the the biggest thing for me is like my material needs currently are not met by this which is like a pain in my left butt cheek um not the right one but um yeah i i'm working like as soon as as soon as we can make like a full time living off of this, that's no that's it's a no brainer. Like this is always what I've wanted to do, but it's hard to it's hard to get there. And we're just like 
we're definitely grinding our little turkises off. So, do you have any advice for anyone who wanted to get into the music industry? Don't. <laughs> uh, I would say I would say do it, but um, it's not as fun as you might think it looks. Yeah, it's fun. Well, um, yeah, yeah. If, if I had, if there real advice, like real advice that I would give to somebody, a do not ignore social media. Do not think that you are above posting on social media because it is. The only way that we have to access millions of people every single day for free um so don't ignore social media or think you're above it and then number two is in-person networking like being a part of your community going to shows going to parties events talks conferences be in the room talk to people around you because they will remember a face that they were in front of and that they spoke with and they will support you later because of that in-person connection. Social media is great, but without that in-person experience, especially delivering a live show, like if you can deliver an amazing live show for people that have never seen you before, you're going to go far. Um, so that's, those are my big, yeah, those are my big yeah no, um, social media is very important. How did you guys even get the success on social media that you guys have? consistency consistency and who handles the social media out of you two? Oh, lucky joe <laughs> um john is not john is not somebody who would post on social media naturally oh, okay has to be forced to <laughs> i yeah i will post on social media because i think or i used to think it was fun um and i've kind of developed an eye for it john's good at it too like especially tiktok John's skits on TikTok do so well when we do some comedy stuff. Um, so he's he's great at it. But it started off on Instagram and that was my home platform. So and I am the type A write everything down, organize everything, schedule everything three months out type of person. So that works for me. To actually it's kind of a good balance. And I guess John's the more inspirational on the spot type person and you're the more scheduled get shit done in the long run 100 yeah yeah um it's if you get there that balance mm. do you find it easier having two people or would you prefer to break off andrew and go your own way <laughs> this podcast john you're done um <laughs> no uh i like it like this because if it was all up to me, like it was 100% my decisions and my everything, I think I would like crumble under the weight of the pressure of it. <laughs> um, I like being able to, because another thing that's I think really special about our partnership is that I trust John implicitly to be honest with me about what he thinks is good. Um, like we will, neither of us will ever beat around the bush when it comes to if we think something is good or bad. And we also have a trust that it's like, if I tell you something sucks, you know that I'm not attacking you, that all I'm doing here is trying to make our product the best that it can be. Because I, if, if I'm telling you I don't like something, it's because I think you can do better. Yeah. So having that kind of back and forth with somebody you trust is like invaluable. Yeah, well, most duos, seem to last do you guys think you guys were like they seem to last and then when they get massive success they crumble do you guys think you would last <laughs> we're gonna find out <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll get massive success and we'll find out yeah hopefully we get massive success and our lives just crumble away from under us <laughs> then we'll have then we'll have money <laughs> um, but it's who i'm a different person today than i was yesterday than i will be tomorrow um, and that's true for everyone. I think like we're, we're all constantly changing and evolving and like our needs might change this, the, we might be served differently by, by working with different people in future points in our career. But, um, I think this trust is invaluable. Uh, and I love our team. Like we have our core team, including our manager, Drew, um, is just like, like, this is my family and I, 
even if we're not making music forever, like we're we're going to be supporting one another in our musical and creative pursuits forever. I think. You guys hang out uh, hang out outside the studio. Are you guys friends outside the duo. We used to hang out more before we started this. Like, we're working a lot right now. Like, we barely yeah. I barely do anything outside of work. Um, I think that's the same for John. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like the the reality though is is that when you're gigging really regularly, you don't do anything but play music and go to the bar after or you know whatever it is that you're doing so we have fun (laughs) what was your first show uh live show like speaking of live shows what was our first live show do you remember first ever yeah was it sage cafe yes it was sage cafe crazy like we guys uh, know this? It was like ten. I think ten people, ten or fourteen people showed up. Yeah. No, you know what? I think it was before that we did like that basement show with Billy Green or whatever. That was before. I think that was after. Oh, maybe, maybe. So I think the first one was Sage Cafe, which is a was like a campus coffee shop on at, at Temple, and it was really weird because the place is just not designed to be a music venue and a bunch of our friends came and and just... someone from the record label came <laughs> someone from the, the temple university campus record label came and that's how that's kind of how it all started like they were like we want to sign you at the time we were like signing a deal so we just <laughs> did it <laughs> Did that benefit you guys much, or I'm gonna say yeah, it benefited us for sure. Yeah, I th- at, at least the fact that we got we had a studio we could use every weekend that yeah. was a big help. And also, we had like the advice of Jack Klotz, who was like the one of the lead like audio engineering professors at Temple, and he had a lot of really great feedback for us when it would come to like putting together our mixes. So, yeah. And how, how is the independent lifestyle going? Like, we live in a world where you can just release music off your phone if you really wanted to. But how do you guys feel the differences between independence and that mild record label ride that you guys had? <laughs> so Temple University's record label is... Uh not a real record label by any stretch of the imagination Um, they used distro kid like like they just let us they just helped us make the music by giving us a space and providing mixing advice and a team of students that um passionately but not particularly well tried to market our music to the best of their ability Um, but they're students and you know it's it that's all you can do when you're a student is do your best um but uh we so we've functionally been independent our entire time. We just mm. we had our our universe our university owns a portion of our um, masters. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, fifty percent. Um, but uh, what'd you say, John? Fifty percent, right? Yeah, they own fifty percent of our of our first two EPs. Um, but I think the the cultural shift towards valuing like the independent grind set or whatever uh isn't necessarily the best in terms of like understanding how to scale your business like i think it uh i think it's it it ignores a big part of what being an artist is and that's creating like creating a business like it's a small business that you run with a team of people it's really hard to be to run a business with just one person um especially an artist team that requires so many different moving parts and um different sets of expertise so um you can curate a team of people and build a business by yourself and bring in people that you vet in your community to run your business and that's how people like chance the rapper or russ do it right like these like independent flagships um they 
create their own community um, by sourcing talent that they choose themselves and maintaining ownership. But with labels, distributors, publishers, sync agents, booking agents, like you're building a team to build a business and you're building this business with investors, right? Like just like any business uses investment firms to beef up their portfolio, make themselves larger, um, find more talent to bring into the business. That's what you're doing with the band. Um, so however you do it, you have to be smart about it. You have to build your business wisely where you maintain ownership and you maintain control and agency but it's not like it's not as simple as like you sign one 360 deal and you're going to be taken care of for the rest of your life like there are so many more options for us now sorry that it, there, it's not as black and white as like signed or unsigned you know yeah. but yeah not many people do understand the behind the industry all they see is the industry people yes you know, and a lot of new people want to be signed because they think that's the end all be all but they also totally. don't want to do the grind and the hustle of the independence it's kind of like a catch-22 for everybody i guess also like and you know i this isn't meant to be I'm not like knocking rich people i'm also not saying that it's impossible to make it in music unless you're rich but there are a lot of rich kids that to kind of screw with the perception of what it's like to make it in music. There are a lot of really, really rich kids that are able to throw an industry professional on retainer to shop them around, to get them in the right rooms, and then suddenly they blow up, right? And it's like, how did they do that? Oh, well, they're great musicians and blah, 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 blah. And like, and the industry plant is like a myth. Like these people are working hard, but there is a, there is, money buys privilege money buys priority um and it's sometimes hard to like understand that when you're looking at someone's like meteoric success it's like oh well yeah no no wonder it happened like that it's very easy when your parents can bankroll you for a good three years while you're figuring stuff out and paying for a you know, management consultant to, to put you in front of Columbia Records. You seem very passive aggressive about this. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm, it's not passive aggressive. Maybe it's passive aggressive. It's just straight up aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, like. I'm not trying to hide it at all. No shade to those people. Like go like if I had money, that's what I would be doing. Like I would I would use my money to get what I want in life. You know, go do it. But I think it's more I'm I get upset sometimes with like the messaging and the culture of like this hustle and that like there's you do have to recognize that there's luck and privilege that that manifests in every industry, but music industry especially. Um, and that people benefit from hiding that they have privilege um, for external perception. So, um, I did get something come up saying I'm running out of time. We have nine minutes to wrap this up. <laughs> so, if all that being said, would you change anything that you guys done have done between when you started and now? What, what do you think, John? I was talking a lot. John? Are you there? I think that's oh. John. <laughs> oh, no. Um, well, more talking from me. Hope you like the sound of my voice, everybody. Um, but uh, I try not to think, yeah, we lost John. We did oh. lose John. Um, he'll be back. But there he is. There he is. Sorry about that. Internet's really spotty over here. <laughs> That's okay. Um, did you hear the question, John? No, I did not. No. <laughs> um, all that being said about the independence and record label and all that stuff, would you change anything between what you guys have done between when you started and now? Like, what would you change if you guys could?
I think he's going again. <laughs> no. That question. Something about that question. <laughs> I don't think he wants to answer it. <laughs> I would personally not change anything. Or if I take that back, I would have put us. Can you hear the ice cream truck, by the way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Philly. Um, do, they, do they do they play the same ice cream music in Australia? Yeah, same song. Sound same yeah. song. Wow. Okay. Some things are really just universal. I think it's, yeah, I think it's just a universal yeah, sound. I just I just moved to a different part of the house. <laughs> That's alright, John. <laughs> I would change nothing. If yeah. the one thing about like what our decisions that we made as musicians, the one thing I would change is I'm a lot more tender with myself now than I was when I was younger. I'm a lot more um, focused on my mental health and physical health. And um, I understand that that is a necessary component of being a successful business person, no matter what you're pursuing, is like taking care of yourself. Um, and so I, if I could tell myself then that it's a vital component of all this, I would. That's the only thing I would change. And what about you, John? Would you change anything? So I would tell myself that um, you're always going to have those voices in your head that are going to tell you something's not good or that some, or that people aren't going to like it or that, you know, it's not good and it's not as good as the other stuff. But the, the truth is that if you like it, someone else is going to like it. Hmm. And yeah, I would silence those voices. Yeah. Um, before we wrap this up and I hit you with my four questions, I will ask, do you guys have anything to say to your ever-growing fan base? Ever-growing fan base. I love your positive. Ever-growing fan base. Stream the new song. <laughs> yeah, stream the new song. Um, and thank you. I hope I, I hope we're entertaining. I hope we're entertaining you. And um, stay along for the ride because we are we are going to be releasing some really cool music in the future. And yeah, we're and here for you. <laughs> and to anyone who isn't following you, what do you have to say to them? Fuck you. <laughs> Follow us now. Um, uh, follow us, please. Uh, no, I don't know. Um, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, if you like our music, if you don't like our music, make time in your life for music. You know, like, like create space in your life to consume art and stuff that makes you feel things, whether it's us or not us. You can try us on for size, but if we don't work, don't let that turn you off from <laughs> getting into bands. I don't know. Does that make any sense? <laughs> It does, yeah. You're very passionate about music by the sounds of it. You could say that. <laughs> um, I do have a list of four questions I ask everybody. Um, Shoot. I'll start with, what's your favorite food? Pizza. That was easy. That's so hard. Um, so hard. You know what? Right now in my life, tofu corn fritters from the Thai, Thai restaurant down the street. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite food. Um, Netflix or Disney Plus? I don't have Disney Plus. Yeah, I just don't have Disney Plus, but Netflix is trash. So, yeah. pass? Pass. Fair, fair. Um, PlayStation or Xbox? Never owned a PlayStation in my life. Ooh. I owned an Xbox 360. Um, so, I got to go with Xbox. I've never owned either. So, oh, jeez. <laughs> this is harsh. Um, and what's your biggest conspiracy? Biggest conspiracy? Like my favorite conspiracy theory? Yeah. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. I don't think Paul McCartney said. Or no, I mean, I do think Paul McCartney said <laughs> I don't think that's the real Paul. And what about Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder blind? Oh, Steve, yeah, Stevie Wonder's not blind. Um, those are great. Those are two great ones. Those are great. The ones. All the music music ones are great. The 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 Paul is dead one, like the when you oh, read, when you play the record backwards and it says Paul's dead. I love that. And you guys are built different over there in Philly. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> 
like usually when I ask people some questions, like along the lines of all those four questions, they have something like someone at least has a PlayStation or Xbox in their house. Someone has at least Netflix or Disney Plus, and then your conspiracies are very wild. <laughs> what do people usually say with the conspiracy question? Well, they go with like the main ones, like you know, like the nine eleven thing and stuff like that. But he, he as I was saying, like the legend Stevie Wonder's not blind. <laughs> That is a good out of pocket theory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna stick with the Stevie Wonder and the Palm Garden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like that's just crazy. Like you don't you, the conspiracies there must be so different. <laughs> I think we're just niche. I think we're <laughs> niche. niche individuals. I guess if that's how you, you want to put it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very friendly way of putting it. <laughs> being tender with myself <laughs> um i'll wrap this up now um rubber thank you guys so much for coming on thanks like, for having us of course well, i appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day and your busy schedule and you're not netflix or disney plusing or playstation or xboxing so <laughs> thank you for getting up at five in the fucking morning yeah seriously <laughs> oh no that's okay um, what do you guys do outside of your music career other than working? Nothing. <laughs> I, I like to cook. I, I really like to cook yeah. in like a chef situation. I also tend to a lot of plants at home. I'm like a, I'm like a verified Martha Stewart. I'm like domestic things. I, I have iced tea in the fridge chilling right now that I made myself. That's not hard, but it is bougie. There's like ground ginger and stuff in it. It does sound pretty fancy. Um, Rubber, um, thank you guys so much again for coming on. Of course. Thank you. Of course.